Hi everyone. In my video where I discussed machine tool coordinates, G. Tucker commented, I'd really like to see a description of absolute versus incremental positioning. One thing that always seems to be missing from discussions of absolute and incremental is some concrete examples of how to put these methods to work and when one method provides an advantage over the other. That's a fantastic suggestion, so let's get started. First of all, every DRO out there has a button that will change between absolute and incremental modes. Of course, what that button says depends entirely on the manufacturer, but it's usually something like the abs slash ink here on my lathe DRO or the A slash I like you see on my milling machine. I often switch between absolute and incremental modes so I can use them as separate independent zeros. This comes in really handy, especially when I'm making multiple pieces on the mill. I can have each one of these set up and find their respective edges without affecting the other part or having to change my setup to make the other part. You can also use absolute and incremental moves when you're working on a single part. In general, dimensions on a print will be given from just one origin point. That might be the corner of a part or the center point of the blank on the mill and generally the end of the part on the lathe. These are absolute coordinates and you should zero each axis to coincide with that point from the print. Sometimes though, it's much more crucial that the features are related to each other rather than that absolute origin point. A good example would be holes for alignment pins between mating parts, such as the ones on these tubing molds or on this vice stop. There needs to be a very tight tolerance between these hole locations, almost certainly tighter than what's called out on the tolerance chart. Otherwise, the parts will bind. In these instances, one hole would usually be called out according to the absolute coordinates, and the others would be given as incremental dimensions from that first hole, with suitably tight tolerances to ensure alignment. Once you move to the first hole, you could then switch to incremental mode and make your other moves. On the lathe, a good example of an incremental move would be a retaining ring groove a certain distance from a shoulder. Just like my other example, this is the kind of thing that may not have a strict relationship to the end of the piece, especially if the tolerances there are loose, but the distance from that shoulder is much more important. I run into this situation at work pretty regularly with pump shafts. There's often a retaining ring holding a bearing in place or setting the working height of a mechanical seal. Those dimensions have to be right, but everything else on the shaft can be plus or minus, nobody cares. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment or two to welcome my newest patrons over on Patreon. It's been a really busy week over there and three new people have started supporting the channel. So hello to Brian Lewis, Mark Talbot, and joining me at the Master Machinist level, hopefully I'm saying this correctly, Jime Ferial. I'm pretty sure that's right. I can't think of another way it could possibly be said. Anyway, if you like what I do and want to be a super cool hep cat like Brian, Mark, and Jime, head on over to my Patreon page. The link is down in the description. Closely related to absolute and incremental coordinates are tool and fixture offsets. These are used to zero different tools for repeated parts that have multiple tool changes or for making multiple pieces held in a fixture or soft jaws. Using these offsets can really boost your productivity. They're especially useful on the lathe where every part is going to use at least a few different tools. Most modern DROs have this feature, but how they work varies a lot between different manufacturers, so it's hard to make sweeping generalizations. On both my lathe and mill DROs, the offsets are linked to the absolute zero. So if I change that, it changes all of the offsets to match. That seems to be pretty typical on the DROs that I've used, but I'm not sure if that's universal among manufacturers. Sometimes this feature is really easy to use, sometimes not, but if you have the option, definitely take the time to figure it out. On my mill DRO from Sino, it's just a matter of cycling through them using the arrow keys. On my lathe DRO from DRO Pros, I have to push this button that looks like a cutting tool and then type in the tool number and press enter. No matter how it's done, it's not a bad idea to label the tool holders with their offset numbers so you can keep track of them during the job. 
If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comment section below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it. Follow me on Instagram at Stuart DeHaro, and please consider supporting my channel over on Patreon like these amazing people right here. You might also want to check out these other videos. On the right is my constantly expanding playlist of quick machining tips videos just like this one. On the top left is my most recent video, and on the bottom left is a video that YouTube is recommending to you from my back catalog. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.